Hey, what's up? John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. And I got a question about IT fields where people can earn a lot of money, a lot of moolah. Got to get the, got to get the Benjamins. So before we get into the question, I do want to take a moment to thank the sponsor for this episode of Simple Programmer YouTube, of the Simple Programmer channel, which is Hired at Hired.com. So what is Hired? Hired is basically, I think, the more superior way to do job searching today because they cut the crap out of it. What they basically do is you go to Hired.com forward slash Simple Programmer, and I'll tell you why in a second why you want to use this, go to slash Simple Programmer. But what they basically do is let you fill out one application, okay, and it's a detailed application. You put all your stuff in there, and then they basically put you right in front of companies. Now, there's a filtering process, you gotta qualify, you gotta be in the location that they serve, but if you're if you're good, you know your stuff, you fill out this one application, it's gonna save you a ton of time, because what they're gonna do is they're gonna now put you basically in a database with a bunch of employers where they can look up specific skill sets, who they're looking for, and instead of going through this whole back and forth, they're gonna send you an interview request, right? So you're not gonna have to send out blasts to all these different jobs, and said the, the employers are gonna go look at you, and they're specifically gonna send you in, in interview requests, and you can reject them or, or accept them. It's a pretty cool process, I think. I, I wish that when I was doing job searching that I had something like this. So go and check it out. Go to hire.com forward slash simple programmer.com or <laughs> hire.com forward slash simple programmer if you haven't already and they actually give you a bonus. So normally I think they give you $1,000 when you get a job with them, but they'll double it if you use that link and give you $2,000. So that uh, is pretty cool. So thanks, Hard. So let's talk about IT fields where people can earn a lot of money. This email is from Shri Harsh. He says, hi John, I am 14 years old and I was just wondering what are the fields in IT industry where I can earn a lot of money in the future? He says, 2020 to 2024. Okay, 14 years old, man. He's really thinking ahead. For example, cloud computing, cybersecurity, and VR, etc. I already know C and C++ and build software. I was wondering what to do next and thought, why not ask you, what are the trending fields in the future? Please can you make a video on this as this isn't only going to help me, but also others who are preparing. Thanks again. So first of all, I mean, you're 14, you know C and C++, you're thinking towards the future. You've even got dates for, you know, 20, 2020 to 2024 that you know that, uh, that, that you're gonna be in the field and, and wanting to make a lot of money. Good on you, man. This is great. This is awesome. This is what I I, I live for. I, I'm I'm very glad that you are this wise, and I'm going to say wise to think ahead this far. So I want to give you some advice here on IT fields where you can earn a lot of money. It, it's a little bit difficult to predict, right? What's going to happen in 2020 or 2024? But I've got a few ideas of of some areas where I would look. I'm bull, bullish on VR. I think VR is here to stay. I've got an Oculus Rift here, okay, that I just got. I'm gonna do a review on this thing, I promise. But I was very skeptical until I put this thing on, and now it's just, it's crazy. I mean, the technology already is far superior to any other games and user interfaces that I've used. And I can't just, I can't even imagine when the resolution gets higher, when it gets better, where we're gonna go with this. It, it is finally here, right? So I think VR is, is huge. I, I think investing in VR makes a lot of sense to me, right? I think that's, I think that, I think VR also has the potential to shift everything else. Because if we start operating in VR and we have VR worlds, then the whole notion of a lot of the paradigms that we're using for computing may change because they be, may become more physical in, in paradigms, right? You know, it may be that when you're writing code, you're moving your things around. You're actually logically constructing blocks and pieces because we have this tactile, this spatial sense, right? One really interesting thing like to think about here, I don't wanna to go too far off tangent, but this is kind of interesting. I was just reading a book, I haven't finished yet, I'll do a review when I'm done, 
It's called Moonwalking with Einstein. It's one of Bill Gates' favorite books, actually, that, that he recommended. And it's about memory championships and, and these guys that are really good with their memory. And one of the ways that you become really good with your memory to be able to memorize like a thousand, they, they memorize like a thousand digits of a number in like five minutes or something, or maybe it's an hour, I don't know. It's, but still, it's crazy stuff, right, that they can do a whole deck of cards in five minutes, a randomly shuffled deck of cards. Now, the way that they do this is they access two areas of their brain, one being the spatial area of their brain and the other one being the, the imagery, the, the sense. So if you think about it, right, there's, there's a huge, our, our minds, our ability, our brains are very much primed for spatial kind of tactile environmental type of things. And when we're in front of a computer and we're typing, we're not utilizing that. We're utilizing the, the auditory, the, the visual aspects of the brain, but more the language aspects of the brain. So there's things that, in, in a sense, even though we're, we're linguistic, right, our linguistics are great, in a sense, there's this whole untapped, you know, spatial ability, like our memories operate more effectively in there. So if we can take more of the things that we're doing and we can put them more into that spatial sense, that's why a lot of people write in notebooks, right? Journaling has become a big thing because of that tactile, because of that spatial type of thing. So I honestly believe that VR could transform that and we could actually advance and go further than we can with, without that. So uh, let, let, let's let's move forward past VR. I think that's that's an obvious place that I I would say, even though it's got a lot of hype right now, I still think that, that that's the future. But the, the reason why I'm spending so much time there is I want to say that it's it's it may change a lot of paradigms. It may change the way that we look at the world and the way that we operate with computers and do things. So a lot of my other predictions may not be, be possible or might not be true. Or you know you know what I'm saying that it may change things so drastically that it's impossible to know what's on the other side of, of, of VR, right? Because we can't really see beyond that till we get there. With that said, where else do people earn a lot of money that, that I see? One of them, again, this one is hyped as well, but I believe it is big data. I believe that data, right? Data science, data analytics is gonna be more and more important. We're getting so much data in the world right now. We collect so much data. Being able to process that data is, is huge. So, you know, it, it just increases at such a volume, right? It, the problem no longer is not having enough data, it's being able to utilize it, because you can have a ton of data, and if you can't utilize and draw information from that data, it's a problem. And so that, I'm gonna segue that with, with also another field or another area, which is deep learning neural networks. And that those are gonna have to go together, right? Because we're gonna actually need neural net type of deep learning applications in order to be able to process data so that we don't have to put on our detective hat and perform the analytics or derive the analytics ourselves. We need smart algorithms designed. We need learning systems that can actually analyze the data and do smart things with it and tell us what parts of the data are smart or relevant because there's too much of it, right? So I think that's another area as well, that whole AI, you know, but, but whatever becomes, AI is always like a little bit further than what we can do, right? So the stuff that we're doing today, maybe 20 years ago would have been called AI, but now AI is just a little bit further. It's like the pot at the end of the rainbow. So I think that, that's where I would, I would be looking, right? I mean, one other piece I, I would say here is that, because more of the guaranteed, like where to look in the industry itself rather than the technology would be anything in the financial industry, right? I mean, this is kind of an obvious one, but if you can learn the mathematics and uh, in, in th the finances and you can operate in that financial industry, there's a lot of guys that are software developers that are not necessarily a lot more skilled than other developers, but they're working in the financial industry, so they're making a lot of money, right? Because everyone in the financial industry does. So if you're writing trading algorithms and things like that, if you're working with quants or you are a quant and you're doing programming, that's always gonna be money, right? So I don't know where, what how things are gonna change in the next four years or five years or 10 years, but I do know that the closer you are to people making a lot of money, the more lucrative the, the field, the, the more money that you're gonna make as a developer as well. So I would look in those areas. So if, just to sum this up, what, what would I look at for the future? If I'm 14 right now, I'm looking into VR, I'm looking into 
big data and analytics, and more importantly, how I can use deep learning in analytics together to be able to mine big data in an auto automated way, how to build those algorithms and those systems that can do that. I'm looking at how VR changes things and what kind of new things might emerge from the kind of spatial and tactile things that we're gonna, that are gonna change computing through VR. And I'm looking at money, where I'm following the money trail. What financial industry, what kind of things are more lucrative there and, and, and how can I get into fields that are gonna allow me to get access to that and to work in those environments? That's that's my answer. So, you wanna make money? That's, that's, that's what I would, I would say I think those are, you know, there's some other things that we haven't even imagined yet that we can't even predict yet that are gonna come out in the next five years that always happens. So, you know, just keep your eyes open and, and see where, you know, where is the gold rush? Can you get there a little bit before everyone else? And sometimes can you stay in an area where other people are leaving or where they don't see the depth? Or, or maybe can you slice things down where you can become a really, really specialized expert in an area and mine deeper than other people, if that makes sense to you. All right, if you like this video, I have a simple request for you. If you wanna earn a lot of money, click the subscribe button. Why? Because you'll get my videos every day and I will help you to become a better person, better in your career, and I'll, I'll teach you the lessons that I'm learning in life along the way. They're not always perfect. My advice isn't perfect, but uh, you can at least learn from my mistakes and uh, and I, I sincerely wanna, wanna help you to become a better software developer and a, and a better person and live a better life. So I'll talk to you next time. Don't forget to click subscribe. Take care.